My name is Johanna Miller Lewis. I'm chair of the history department at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. And today is March 31st, 2004. I'm interviewing Thelma Mothershed Ware, one of the Little Rock Nine, for the National Park Service Oral History Project on the history of uh, the Central High Crisis. So I think we'll start at the beginning and I'll ask you um, where and when you were born. I was born in 1940 in a small town in Texas called Bloomberg. It's in the, the northeastern corner of Texas. Mm -hmm. We're close to Texarkana, about 40 miles from Texarkana. Nice little town. And when did your family move to Little Rock? My dad went to the Army during World War II, so with mother, they had three little girls. So mother brought us back to Little Rock, which is her home state, because she didn't want us, you know, she wanted to be with her family, mm -hmm. her sisters and brothers, so they could help her take care of us while he was in the Army. So about 1943, we came to Little Rock, really down the country. So then the next year, we went up to North Little Rock. By 19, oh, I guess 51 or two, we came over to Little Rock. Mm -hmm. And where did you live in Little Rock? 1313 Chester. Uh -huh. And the neighborhood where we lived was an integrated neighborhood. There was a white apartment complex across from our street, across the street from our house. White people just sparkled all around, speak all around. Um, what other memories do you have of your neighborhood and your family when you were growing up? Well, my family had, at first there were three girls that we had First, I went to Arkansas, that was the first boy born. So at that time, we had four children. Uh, I was in junior high school, but the second boy was born, so then there were five of us at, five of us at the time. So uh, I was born with a bad heart. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't do anything that other boys and girls could do for normal kids. So my fun was to sit on the porch and play jacks. My sisters and brother, Jumping rope, skating, sure. basketball, baseball. All I could do is sit and play jacks or play with dolls. Mm -hmm. They say I was mean. I can't imagine me being mean, can you? But I no. guess if, I, if, you know, if other people can do things that I can't, couldn't do, I probably was mean. Mm. Did I, you read a lot? I read a lot, yes yeah. I did. Mm -hmm. In order for me to get to school, since I couldn't walk much, my sisters and some neighborhood kids would pull me in a little red wagon to, uh, Hillside Elementary School in North Little Rock, Arkansas. They pulled me over there. Then to go to church, it was about two blocks around the corner. They pulled me to church and to school. Some other kids would jump on, say, can I get a ride? Can I pull? Can I help? You know, he was really nice. And I was, see, these days, I should say this, that wagon probably would get stolen. <laughs> but it stayed out there while I was in school. It was ready to get back in to go home and even. Yeah. So I went to school, first and second grade. Then the doctors told my parents that my, I was not doing well. I could not go to school anymore. Hmm. So I was home taught for three years, third, fourth, and fifth grade, home taught. Two years, the fourth and f third and fourth in the North Little Rock. Fifth grade, we moved to Little Rock. Mm -hmm. So still the homebound taught. So by sixth grade, the doctor said I was doing somewhat better so I could go to school, but I couldn't climb steps. All the, f uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade class on the second floor of schools. So my first, my parents found a school, Bush Elementary. They had a portable outside for special education kids. So they arranged for me to go to Bush Elementary School in special education class. The teachers taught each kid at their own grade level. Mm -hmm. So I was in a special edu education class for a year, sixth grade. Then seventh grade, I went to Dunbar Junior High School. And I managed that real well. In the, in the eighth grade, I was inducted into the, to the Junior Honor Society. Mm -hmm. By ninth grade, I was president, president of the Honor Society. I tell this to crowds, I say now, when special education to the Honor Society president, I just think I deserve a, a clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they give me one, say, yes, yeah, sure you do. <laughs> so anyway, when I was in, I'm going too fast. Let's go, okay. You're not going too fast. Okay, you know, those things that happen when I, okay. When I tell people about way back then, 
I tell the kids about we had to drink out of different water fountains downtown. Mm -hmm. Water fountains said colored and white. Restrooms and actually said colored and white. They said, oh, Miss Well, Miss Well, yeah, that's, oh, that's the way it went back, way back there in the dark ages. That's where things were. They tell me some places it might be going on here now. We don't know those places. I hope there are no places like that anymore. But who knows? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, let me get some information about your, your family. You said that you, ha you were one of, of seven. One of six. Uh, one of six. Mm -hmm. um, if I could get your, your parents' names and your uh, siblings' mm -hmm. names. My dad's name is Olivia Le Leandro Mothershed. My mother is Hosanna Claire Moore Mothershed. My older sister's name is Lois Marie Mothershed Pot. My second sister is Grace Evelyn Mothershed Davis. I'm Thelma Jean Mothershed Ware. Then the first boy, Gilbert O'Neill Mothershed. Second boy, Michael Wayne Mothershed. And last young lady is Karen Lynn Mothershed. Um, when you were growing up, um, did you have uh, a lot of friends? Or was that limited because of your health? Well, I didn't, well, when I, the, the years that I had to be, that, that I was home taught, my friends were kids who were younger than me because they were not in school yet. Mm -hmm. So I would slowly walk around to their little houses and we were you know, play, playing with little kids. That's all I could do. Then my sister came home and then I still couldn't play with them because the things they were doing I was not able to do. Mm -hmm. So I guess my best friends were little kids at the time. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about some of the, the people in your life, either family or, or friends or, or ministers, um, uh, and um, any events in your childhood that you know, were sort of pivotal, pivotal events in, in shaping your, your values or your beliefs? Well, okay, my parents met at college. They met at Jarvis Christian College in Hawkins, Texas. So, and I guess the fact that I could not go to school, but I always wanted to be a school teacher. I mm -hmm. felt that's what, that was my call, to be a school teacher. So I could be with kids since I couldn't go, you know, as a child. Uh, then one of the persons who was most instrumental with me was my uncle, T.R. Reverend Theodore Moore, Theodore Roosevelt Moore, my mother's brother, mm -hmm. was our pastor at North of Rock. And my aunt Mary, her, old, her older sister, a very good Christian lady, an old, woman, old, an old maid, a school teacher. She just taught teach school, teach school for years and years and years. She started teaching in one of those one room, run room, one room schools. She, had that, she did that. We went down to visit her school. And she had, you know, she had it together. She was a good teacher. So she, she taught and taught. Anyway, an event. Okay, some events that happened to me early. My mother had a little episode with the tuberculosis. So she was in a sanatorium. So my dad was taking us, the, the four of us, to visit her once, one afternoon, one Saturday, I think. There was a, I guess, a state fair or something going on in Little Rock. And the police, well, we didn't know the Rock at the time. So the police pulled him over and told him you know, he was not supposed to be out there because it was a day for the white people. Oh. They took him away from us, left four kids in the car. So some white ladies had seen what happened. So she came and asked us where, who, who would, could take care of us, where could she take us. So we told about Aunt Mary and her address. So she took us to Aunt Mary's house. And so they just took, took Dad away from us. Hmm. He came back late on. And I should have asked him, what did they do to you? I've been intending to ask him that, but I have not gotten around to ask mm -hmm. him, what happened to you when they took you to, away from us? And did they apologize for doing something so ugly? Yeah. That's, that's bad, bad. Just little kids in his car. Mm. Um, when, um, when you were growing up in, in Little Rock, um, obviously it, it was segregated. Um, how often did you come into contact with white people? I mean, aside from the, I guess, the folks who live across the street from you. Well, you see them here when you go down there, you see somebody, but you know, and really, I thought it was just, to me, I always describe Little Rock as a quiet, progressive city. Mm -hmm. When all hell broke loose, I was surprised. I just yeah. did not expect it to look up. Yeah. So what? Look like this is my hometown? What is, what is going on? I didn't expect it. Those people, you know, they'd speak to you, you know. They'd make friends necessarily, but they would speak to you. They would, were not hostile that I knew of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
tell me about um, where you went to church uh, when you were growing up. I went to a church called Mount Sinai Christian Church, Disciple of Christ. It was on 23rd and, I don't know, anyway, in Northern Rock, Military Heights. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a small church. The religion is small. There's not a lot of Disciple of Christ people. It's kind of religion. We have communion every Sunday. It's kind of a quiet religion. My uncle, I saw sometimes one of the people to be, get more, more uh, animated in the services, who is sit to listen to his sermon. He said, Amen, Walls. He wants somebody to get some reaction. He said, Amen, Walls. Somebody say something. Let me know that you, you're listening to me. <laughs> anyway, he was a good preacher. Under him doing a revival, I joined church, and he baptized me. So those things I remember about Mount Sinai Christian Church. And so, did you continue to go there after you moved to Little Rock? Yes, I, I, I read you on this summer. Yes, I go oh, that's now. great. Mm -hmm. That's great. I sure do. Um, you have uh, mentioned um, going to school and then um, going uh, to, to Dunbar. Um, when did you hear about uh, uh, the possibility that you could go to Central High School? We knew that. Uh, Brown, Brown versus Wood of Education said, so, hey, that means we can go someplace. So do you remember the ruling? You said, oh, yes, something had to happen. Because, you know, after all, separate but equal. Has anything separate ever been really equal? Because mm -hmm. whoever's dividing usually takes a bigger share for themselves, I think. Yeah. That's just human nature. You take the best for yourself. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I, was doing, I was at Horace Maine at the time in 10th grade, and the Board of Education sent around a notice saying people who lived in Central Central's area who were interested could sign up for a transfer. So like my friends and I said, hey, we should go to Central. Cause we heard that they have better equipment than we do, better supplies, and you know, might be just a better place to go. Mm -hmm. Since we're close, cause really, had I been a well child, I could have walked to Central from mm -hmm. my house. So anyway, we signed up to go to Central. Then Farbus came to TV and said that uh, he foresaw some trouble. He was calling out his National Guard. I thought he meant to protect me. How wrong I was. Y yes. I found that out then, real hard. I found that out. He didn't mean that. Uh, before Central um, happened in 1957, um, did anyone in your family belong to the NAACP? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. My mother and father belonged to the NAACP. I think, yeah, yeah, they did. And um, did you know who uh, Daisy Bates was before all this started? I knew who she was, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had not really been in touch with her. Mm -hmm. How did you um, feel about the school district's plan to start desegregating at Central? I mean, was it explained to you, or did they just say, did you want to go? They, were, they explained in newspapers that they wanted to start at Central High School and work down gradually. Mm -hmm. See, had I been old, or had I been a, mem a member of the Board of Education, I would suggest that they start at elementary and work up. Absolutely. They did it backwards. Yeah. Because kids that age think that they already know everything, think they're better than somebody else. And I think the worst part was that the parents came. Had the parents stayed at home, the kids may have cooperated and may have, it would have worked a lot smoother had the borough parents stayed at home. Mm-hmm. Or going to work or done something. Mm-hmm. Just like the other way, excuse me. Oh, that's fine. Do you remember filling out a questionnaire for the school district about going to Central? I don't, not that I remember. Okay. Do you know if um, either you or your parents met with anyone from the school district before the 57 school year began? We went, we went down to the Board of Education and met with Virgil Blossom, mm -hmm. those of us who were interested, who were going to be, who were thinking about going. Because I know there were more kids who met with Virgil Blossom, and he told us that we would be expected to keep a low profile. Don't participate in anything. Don't join anything. You just go to class and go home. Mm -hmm. So a lot of boys and girls say, hey, especially the boys, hey, if I can't you know, be on the football team, sure. run track, why do I need to go to Central? I can just go to the state man and maybe get a scholarship to college. Mm -hmm. So a lot of kids did not go themselves. So I don't, I don't know why they chose. I don't, and then some others. I don't know if academics had anything to do with it or not. Mm -hmm. But the Board of Education eliminated some people and some boys and girls eliminated themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and some parents eliminated kids because a friend of mine has a husband who is who's, is our same age. And his dad would not let him go to Central. He said, no, because it's going to be too much for trouble, so no, you can't go. Mm -hmm. So with him, it would have been a little rock 10, but uh, yeah, it did, didn't work. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Um, were you aware of the fact, or, or did your parents ever talk about the fact that um, if uh, you went to Central, that you would not have the support system in terms of the teachers who you know may or may not have known your parents the, that that existed at Dunbar and at Horace Mann? No, they didn't. I guess they just felt like every child has to stand on, on your own ground and just make a, make a way for yourself. Mm -hmm. you get to know the teachers and let the teachers know you and just do the best that you can. Mm -hmm. Learn what you can. So when you were set to attend Central in the fall of 1957, uh, how did you learn about Governor Falbus um, calling out the National Guard? He, he, came, he came on television that night before. Mm -hmm. I heard on TV mm -hmm. that he called out the National Guard. So I was really surprised when I came and saw all those people from all over the state and from some other states that likes this place, from all over the place. Because they felt like, hey, if this happens at Central, then the black people in our community will be expected to integrate schools too, so we can't let this happen in a little while. Mm -hmm. That's why they were out there. Do you remember a lot about that day? I remember it was, it was hot and crowded. We went up to the school and got out of the car. We could do that, we couldn't go because of all the traffic, all the people blocked around. So I, I think I got out of the car, but I knew we couldn't go out very, very much further. I think Daisy Basin, Daisy Basin, some uh, attorneys, some, some people were there, and they came back and told us that we can't go, and so you all just get back in the car. Mm -hmm. I was not one of those who really approached the guards. Mm -hmm. I had to go that far. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you weren't allowed to go back for quite a few weeks, a few, um, a few weeks. after that. That's right. Yeah. Um, how did you uh, stay current with your schoolwork? We couldn't, you know, just read something, read the newspaper. That's not really schoolwork, though. Mm -hmm. So as we we actually three weeks late, we started school that year. That year, mm -hmm. so you just had to work hard trying to catch up, mm -hmm. try to pass, mm -hmm. which we did. We still have to catch up. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Did you get any assistance during those three weeks, tutors or no. anything? No, no, okay. we didn't. Mm -hmm. um, there was, of course, um, a, a second attempt for you all to get into the school uh, with the police present. Yes. Um, if you could uh, tell me something about that day. Well, we were excited just to get into Central. So we went into the, it looked like it was an, autom an, autom an automobile shop or something in the basement. So the police, two the police cars took us to the basement, went up the stairs, and we went, went and registered. Went to our classes. Mom was still outside. Mm -hmm. So well, I guess we att had attended two or three classes. And some of the kids went outside and told people all the mob, hey, they're in, they're in, they're inside. So some of the mob outside and called and told police that they were going to bomb the school or blow it up or do something if they didn't get us out of there. So I guess the principal uh, called the Board of Education and told them, hey, you better, we got to get them out because there's going to be some trouble. So the police came in. Okay. We, they came, the monitors, monitors came to our class and said, you want back at the office. We said, what? So we went back to the office. They said, you got to go. The well, police took us back and told, told us to stay low, stay low, as they put, put us back in, put, as they put us back in the car to take us back out. Mm -hmm. So, so well, this, this, that was a heck of a day. But at least we got in for a while. Right, right. For a while. Um, and then it would have been the, the next week yeah. when um, Eisenhower uh, called out the 101st Airborne. Indeed. Um, do you um, remember uh, watching President Eisenhower on television? No, but I just remember watching those guards coming in, mm -hmm. watching TV, the, the vehicles coming across the bridge, and then with those living at 13th and Chester coming down 14th Street. All mm -hmm. oh, that regalia, all those wonderful, the army. I said, this was, the army has come in a city to put nine kids in a school. Did that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Was this not America? Anyway, it happened. So it, I was proud of the 101st. It was a happy day. Happy day. So how was um, September 25th when you were escorted in by the 101st Airborne? And on September 25th, all the crowd that had been on the walkway, robbed us from coming to school. When the 101st came, surrounding us, the crowd parted like when Moses stretched out his staff at the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. The crowd parted like the waters. We walked in on dry and clean land into the school. 
And then we were each assigned a soldier inside the building who went with us from class to class and stood outside the door, doing the classroom in case I guess some trouble broke out. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to have 101st there because we were not bothered at all then. Mm -hmm. Then 101st we recall, the Arkansas National Guard when we were there. So some of those people, those young men, may have just left Central the year before themselves. So how interested could they be in protecting us? Mm -hmm. Not at all. So we felt you know, there was a, little, a lot more pres pressure on us when the 101st left. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when the 101st uh, left, um, how were you treated? Well, they got, the kids got a little more. Oh, OK. For example, I was sitting across the desk, of course, table in, in the cafeteria for Minnie Jean Brown. When the soup, soup accident happened, mm -hmm. boy came and poured some soup on the head. And I'm sitting across from her. I couldn't say, I was just, I just, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. Why did he do this to Minnie Jean? So I saw guards came and told me they had to go back up to, go to the office and do what. I just couldn't believe what I had seen. But years later, we were on Oprah Winfrey's show. Mm -hmm. So this fellow was there. So he told the audience that he was just, he was just getting her back. Because she, she had already poured soup on his head and his friend's head. See, that, the first time I heard of that was on Oprah's show. Mm -hmm. I thought Minnie Jean was all innocent for that. But uh, she had kept well. But she was kind of egged into it. The made her because, made her because she didn't want to sing at the Christmas carol, Christmas her concert. They would let her. These boys were teasing her. So that's one of the reasons they said she put the soup on them. So he was just paying her back. And one day after the, 100, after the 101st left too, I was in the class. So Mountain came and got me, said that Miss Huckabee wanted to see me in, in her office. I couldn't imagine why Miss Huckabee wanted to see me. So I went to the office, there was a white girl sitting in the corner, <laughs> just crying, that's what is wrong with this girl. Miss Huckabee says, well, whatever. So Thelma, she says that as you all were coming from the cafeteria, she was behind you and you kicked her. I said, I said, I don't do that kind of thing. I said, I've never kicked anybody. I wasn't raised like that. So she said, well, she says you kicked her, so what do you have to say to her? I told her, if I kicked you, I apologize. That evening, her name was on TV. She called TV station and told them that I kicked her, so her name would be called. See, we were on TV too much and newspapers too much. We didn't want that, but that's what all the crowd outside calls. We didn't call that, they did. Mm -hmm. But kids were jealous. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Were you aware of the fact that this wasn't just a, a local news story, but it had, was national and international? Yes, I knew that. Oh, yes, I knew that. And how did you figure that out? How did you find out? The people were calling. Mm -hmm. And my sister lives, no, sis. Yeah, my sister was overseas there. My sister had married, and she lived in, in the Netherlands. It was in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. on front pages. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Bad news travels far. <laughs> Bad news travels far. Um, how did your health hold up during that year? Real well. Really? Mm -hmm. I was blessed. I was blessed, yeah. Because mother, mother told me now. After when I came, when I went home and told her that I had signed up to go to Central, she said, you crazy. How can you manage that school? I said, I think I can make it because I made that man. I mean, Hart, yeah, Dunbar. Mm -hmm. Dunbar has the same full, full floor plan, but it's just a lot larger. Sure. The, the Central is a lot larger. I think I can make it. So I did. I managed. I guess the Lord was with me. I just managed. I managed. I've never had a heart attack. The first thing we got in, when the police took us, I guess I was excited, so I had to sit down for a while. But somebody said that I had a heart attack. I've never had a heart attack. I just got tired. That's mm -hmm. all. Um, the uh, summer following um, the, the crisis, so it would have been the summer of 1958, did you go to New York that summer? Yes, went to New York. Lena Horn. We, I don't know. You tell me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we invited Lena Horn had the, the stage play Jamaica, so we invited up to see Jamaica, which was lovely. Oh, it was nice Mus musical theater. We uh, right down front. Lena Horn just pressed by, pressed by. So she told she said, she said pressed by. That's why she, my skin stays clear because I pressed by so. So I wish I could press by. Maybe skin looked pretty, but she's still a lovely lady, even at her age. Mm -hmm. So we went to see the, the Jamaica, Jamaica. And I think at the time, the NAACP gave us, I think, the Spin Gum Award. Mm -hmm. We awarded the Spin Gum Medals. Mm -hmm. Good. 
How would you say the crisis affected you personally? I think the crisis made me a stronger person. It made me more accept accepting of other people. Because when I first started teaching school, I taught in East St. Louis, Illinois. I had an integrated class. And I think that I was just as, as fair, fair with the white girls as I was with the black girls. I taught home economics. Mm -hmm. Teacher taught clothing and textiles the first couple of years. And I had some nice white girls, some nice black girls. That they were nice to me and I was nice to them. Mm -hmm. I never had a problem with those kids at all. Um, how do you think it affected your family? Ooh, boy, boy. Hmm. Well, when I was there, some kids would call, some boys, I guess, called my house, my house, my house at night and told my family, whoever else phone, if that nigga comes back to school again, we're going to blow your house up. So my brother, who's two and a half years younger than I, said, well, come on, come on by here. We got something for you. Mm -hmm. Who do we had? I don't know. <laughs> we didn't have anything. So we got so, the last person to go to bed, just take the phone off the hook. Mm -hmm. so therefore, people could not call, so they, they couldn't scare you. They can't call you, tell That's you, right. get out of your house. We didn't do that. And also, when the hundred first left, it snowed one day. It snowed occasionally. So, Minnie Jean and Melba and I were waiting on my mother to pick us up after school. We went down to 14th Street entrance. There's some white boys outside, packing snow, packing rocks in snow. Mm -hmm. And throwing them inside at us. The National Guard just standing inside back, trying to keep, backing up to keep themselves from getting hit. Mm -hmm. They say one thing to those boys, just trying to dodge the, the, the snow rocks themselves. Mm -hmm. So as I went, went after my mother's car, they still throwing rocks at us. I think that day I cried. I just couldn't believe that. In, in thinking about the, the school crisis, um, sort of what do you remember about the role the NAACP played? Hmm. Ooh, it's hard to tell. Do you remember Thurgood Marshall coming? Oh, or? yes, I remember Thurgood, Thurgood yeah. That's, yeah. I, could, I couldn't tell Thurgood. Supreme Court Justice, I remember Thurgood Marshall. And not at the time, later on, right. not at the time. Right. Yeah, he, was, he was just, he was a, an attorney who did come, into a down, come down to help us. Thurgood. Mm -hmm. Did you get a chance to talk with him? I got a chance to see him. Mm -hmm. I, I was in his presence, but I, really wouldn't, I didn't really talk to him. Mm -hmm. I was in his presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about Mrs. Bates' role? Yeah, Daisy, we went to her home a lot after noon, after school. We sat down and talked about what had gone on, what kind of things had happened to people, and what kind of choices were made by individuals. So it's kind of a sound board. Mm -hmm. Share your feelings and think how you felt and what can be done about the feelings. Mm -hmm. All you can do is deal with your feelings mm -hmm. about the size of it. Did the crowd outside the school and especially sort of the, the strong segregationist sentiment that came from them, did that surprise you? Yes, it did. It did, it did. I, mean, I guess I was just too naive. I just thought that this was almost the perfect world or something. I just didn't know that people could be that mean. I did not. After, even after I heard about Emmett Till, I didn't think that kind of stuff would happen in Little Rock. Because mm -hmm. I was been a type of person who they won't even go through Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I said, because Little Rock is bad enough. How could somebody even live in Mississippi? Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been through Mississippi. It's a lovely state, but I still wouldn't want to live there. Yeah. Mm. Um, did your church get involved at all during the crisis? No, they did not. Mm. Not that I knew of. Mm -hmm. mm. So the, any of the ministers, did you know any of the ministers that were involved? No. Or? no. If you had to, I don't want to say if you had to pick, but um, I'm, I'm curious what you think, um, what the school crisis sort of was all about. Was it about race? Is it about class? Is it power? Fear? Hmm. Well, the year that was Eisenhower's 100th birth year, that a, a segment in Abilene, Kansas, and they celebrated his birthday all year. So during the month of May, I think it was, there's a sex segment called the 50s, a mm -hmm. decade in white, in black and white. They invited Little Rock Nine to come. They invited 
fall was to come. Mm -hmm. uh, Linda Brown from the first uh, boys came. Uh, I think the girl from New Orleans came also. Mm -hmm. So we were all there around the Addison house. Yeah, I was, anyway, before, we, as we first get, getting there, I was in his library. Some reporter was sitting in the corner. I was talking to some reporter. So Forbes came in. He walked over. He said, hi, Thelma. I said, what? I said, oh, hello, Governor Forbes. He just came over and spoke to me. And with that evening in the, in the sessions, he told the crowd that he did what he had to do. Mm -hmm. That's what, what was expected of him. Other southern, southern governors expected him, expected that of him, and so did the other southern constituents. So he did what was expected of him. Non-repentant. So power, power, power. Mm -hmm. Non-repentant. Mm -hmm. Not then, anyway. Mm -hmm. so. Was it um, nice to have the opportunity to say something back to him? I just, I just spoke to him. I, I didn't see yeah, I, no, I didn't say anything. Because I thought, I said at first, how, he, how could he know me? And I said, that's still, he knew all of us. Because he probably had nightmares about all of us. He should have had nightmares about each of us individually. So how could he not know me? But well, I certainly knew him. <laughs> Do you have any particular um, memories of the crisis that stand out? I do remember. Uh, this is a public high school, but they uh, allowed the kids to have a room. In the morning, some kids would go to have a chapel. Mm -hmm. So some of the nine said, we, we may as well go to chapel. We can't do anything else. Let's go to chapel. But at 8 o'clock, we can stay from 8, 8 to late 30. Nice time to just you know, kind of just be refreshed before we start our, our lessons. We went, we went to chapel for quite a while. Then we noticed that some of the angels in the chapel for some of the devils in the hall. They start coming in that chapel too, so we were, we don't need to see them. Mm -hmm. That's the, so we didn't go to chapel for too much, we, for too long. <laughs> but it was a nice place to go. Prayers uh, and hymns and such. W with um, this year being the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of um, the Brown decision, mm -hmm. there has been a lot of um, talk and attention in the press about sort of how successful was the Brown decision? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, or, or even was it successful uh, uh, type of thing? Um, what, what's your perspective on that? What do you think about the Brown decision? I think it was very successful. I'm happy that it happened, but I'm happy that I had an opportunity to go and see other people and be with other people. I think that if people are together, if people are educated together, the more they know about each other, the more they can tolerate each other. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know anything about a person, how can you like a person? You don't know what their boros, mores are, that you don't know anything about the person. So how can you say, well, I don't like this person? Mm -hmm. I think people need to see, see each other and be with each other. Mm -hmm. Now I know uh, that a lot of cities, people, white people move to, to the suburbs. There are people who have money can move out. So the, the schools are left to better like people, so they kind of desegregate, they kind of segregates things again. Mm -hmm. the people, you can't keep people from moving out though. If they got moved money, want to move, there's nothing that can be done about that. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. Yes, I think it, it very, very unfortunate. Um, of course, the, the year after the 57, 58 year, the schools in Little Rock were, were closed. Mm -hmm. um, what do you remember about that year and, and how you oh. received education? That year, uh, those of us who remain, because like Elizabeth Zegford, no, Gloria Ray had gone, her mother had worked for the state, so her job was gone soon. Gloria's foot stepped inside the school. So Gloria went up to Kansas City, I think her brother yeah. was, to finish her education there. So, the, uh, and so Le Ernie had graduated. Minnie Jean was us, in New York. Minnie Jean was in New York. So the rest of us took some courses through the University of, University of Arkansas. Some teachers at Philander Smith College kind of helped us to get our lessons together to make sure that they got up to the university on time. So during the summer, we took some correspondence course, course through, through the University of Arkansas. No, through the school year, I'm sorry. Then that summer, I went up to St. Louis to Hadley Tech. I stayed with attorney Frankie Freeman and her family. I did two courses at Hadley Tech, and I sent in an application to, for admission to Southern Illinois University in, in uh, Carbondale. So I got a letter back saying that I would be admitted. So my parents, said, I packed and took my trunks, I went up to Carbondale. So the dean of admissions stepped out. He said, I'm so sorry, Thelma, 
need one more credit to come to college. He said, that's all right, don't, don't worry, don't worry. That was the University High School right up the, the, up the hill from your, from your dormitory. You can go to the University High School and take two classes the first semester, and there'll be credit that you need for college, for high school. So I went to freshman convocation and then high school. <laughs> so I took those two courses at the at University High School and took taking three, high, three college courses, two high school courses. So as soon as that semester was over, they sent my record to Central from University High School. Then Central mailed my diploma to me. So I graduated by mail, okay? <laughs> As a rough graduation. It, do you think that, that the crisis has had a lasting um, impact on race relations in Little Rock? I hope it is. I think the race relations, they look a lot better. Mm -hmm. I think things are better. Mm -hmm. So I hope that I had something to do with that. I put my cell phone, oh, cell phone back. I had something to do with that. <laughs> if, um, I know that you talk to, to school children uh, a lot. What do you tell them is mm -hmm. the, the greatest lesson to be learned from the crisis? To just be fair to other people. Just be fair, give other people a chance. Same kind of chance that you won't have. Let other people have that same chance. When I, I, when I go around these schools, I, I've gone to schools, to classes from, ele from elementary schools to colleges. I usually let people ask me questions when I finish my little presentation. So kids have asked me, Miss Ware, were you a slave? I said, no, I was not a slave. I said, even my parents were not slaves, but I have a great grandmother who was a slave. Mm -hmm. I knew one, one slave. She was the only one I knew. And she died you know, early in my life. And then some kids asked me, uh, are any of y'all dead yet? I said, no, we're all now still alive. I'm on a cane now, but we're all alive. Did you have a bad heart? Yeah, I had a bad heart, but I got it fixed. So I'm all, I'm all right now with this hope, with this hole that I had in my heart is, is fixed now. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. And um, I was told to ask you about a connection you have to Jeopardy. <laughs> oh. My husband told me, that, told me you, you, watch, you watch TV too much. You ought to read some more. Don't be watching all that TV. Come on, all those game shows and stuff. That's the I like the Wheel of Fortune. I like Jeopardy. And I, I did already like Jeopardy. I was watching it one day. And the man chose category. This is when Art Fleming was host. Mm -hmm. So you do a long time for Yes, before. it is a long, yeah, time. long time. I remember. Mm -hmm. So the category, the, man, the category was state capitals. So a man asked for state capitals for whatever amount of money. A little shot, card shot up. It said T, mother said. But Art read, Thole, mother said, was one of nine black kids who integrated Central High School here. So a friend in the apartment building next door, I don't know if I called her or she called me, just like, ah, did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? Oh, gosh. That was a thrill. <laughs> <laughs> my, my name on Jeopardy? Oh, wow. Very exciting, being in the yes, spotlight. Yes, 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 I was. I, was really um, I think we're about done. Do you have um, any other thoughts that you would like to, to share? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about my husband. Please do. My husband, I met in college, Fred Ware. We have been married now, right now 38 years, but he's in a nursing home. We have one son, Scott Frederick, mm -hmm. who is a uh, computer, he's who he is. He has, he has a job in um, Plainfield, Illinois. I think he works in Joliet, but anyway, he has a job, a job in that area. I have two grandsons. My son's name is Scott Frederick Ware. My daughter-in-law is Valerie Joyce Ware. My grandsons are Gabriel, <coughs> excuse me, the old one's been in Dallas Ware, because my son was a Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> been in Dallas Ware. Then Gabriel, the angel, Gabriel Scott Ware. Mm -hmm. So those are the people I'm most proud of, most people I most love. And, right. and did the grandchildren know about your, your role? Yes, they do. They know. I bet they're very proud. Yeah, because Brendan said he told somebody, we got to go to see my grandma. My grandma, Black History, she's famous. The boy, huh? <laughs> black History. There's people, white people in your neighborhood. Because this school is mostly white people. There are a few blacks in the neighborhood, but not very many. Mm -hmm. So some people, some people, I guess, know, that no kids know what black history is, who black history is. Well, they've seen a black history person. Let me tell you this one thing, and I'll be through. <laughs> when I first started talking, teaching at this junior high school, a girl came to my class. She said, Miss Ware, 
We're in this little box of stuff. So history will share. She says, Mr. 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 Reed, Reed said, you in this little box of stuff. I said, yes, I was. That's old. That's a picture. That's old. As a matter of fact, that's me, right? that's me, that's me in the book, in the picture. It's, oh, in the history book, you sure must be old. <laughs> I was about 25 at the time. Therefore, now that I am old, I don't tell anybody that anymore. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why I'm discussing with you. <laughs> you sure must be old in the history book. Plus, I told us history was made this morning. It had not been a book yet, but history was made this morning. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So don't All right. Young people, young people. Very good. I think that that uh, wraps us up. Very good.